Well, hi there. I'm here today to talk about actually a relatively controversial topic, but probably one that shouldn't be controversial. And that's evolution. And for that reason, I've brought a pile of rad snakes. These are ball pythons. As it turns out, every single one of these is a ball python. And that might be surprising to some people because they really don't look that much alike. But are they all the same? These pythons are all different because they all contain different alleles. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about when I say alleles, you should definitely check out our videos on genetics. Our first genetics video actually explains all about alleles, but alleles essentially are just different flavors of a gene, different variants of a gene, and different variants of a gene code for different things. In this case, snakes that look very, very different, though every single one of these snakes was actually captive bred, these different alleles originally came from wild populations. These different alleles were actually originally made when a mistake was made during the copying of some genes. You can't have offspring if you can't make a copy of your genes, and sometimes those copies aren't quite right. The result of this mistake was a brand new allele, a mutant. Mutation is what creates new alleles. And when a population has lots of different alleles in it, we say that it has a lot of variation. Without variation, there are actually only two different things that can happen to a population. It can either continue on exactly the same, or it can go extinct. But if there is variation, like there is in ball pythons, then it can change. What we will want to look at is how many of any one specific kind of allele exists in a population compared to the total number of alleles in that population, or what's called a ratio. For example, if I have 100 alleles, 80 of the alleles that code for a snake that looks like this, and 20 of them code for a snake that looks like this, then I have a four to one ratio. If I come back 10 years later and now I have 1,000 alleles, and 200 code for a snake that looks like this, then the ratio is still four to one. For every one that codes for this, there are four that don't. Thus, even though the population is growing, the ratio is staying the same. But it really gets interesting when the ratio changes. But what would cause this? It is probably fair to say that, in the wild, some of these snakes would probably survive more often than others, or that some would get killed more than others. But it's also probably fair to say that the success of these alleles will probably depend a lot on what the environment that they're in is like. If any of this sounded outrageous or controversial or it just didn't make sense, please comment about that down in the comments and we will be happy to answer any questions you have and hopefully make sense of it. But if it did make sense, then we agree that some alleles are going to do better in the environment than others and which ones are likely to be the most successful is gonna depend a lot on what they do and what the environment is like. When the ratio of alleles in a population changes because some alleles are more successful in the environment than others, or more likely to get passed on to the next generation than others, we call that natural selection. But that isn't the only way that the allele frequency or the ratio of alleles in a population can change. Sometimes the ratio of alleles will change not because it helps you survive, but because it helps you find a mate, either because it helps you fight off potential rivals or because the ladies really like it. We call that sexual selection. Sometimes new alleles are brought into a population by somebody moving in, or they leave the population because somebody left. This is called gene flow. The ratio of alleles, this allele frequency, can even be changed by random events, especially when they drastically change the size of the population, like when a new population is formed or when some natural disaster or something drastically reduces the size of the population. This is called genetic drift. Overall, the variation in a population can be changed by many things. And when any of these things change the ratio of alleles in a population, the allele frequency, we call this And I really don't think that's a very outrageous thing. 
Unless, of course, you don't believe in mutations or variation. I would love to do whole videos on each and every one of these things that cause evolution and other topics in evolution as well. So if that is something you would like to see in the future, please like this video and comment down in the comments. Let us know what you'd want to see, how much you enjoyed seeing this, and of course, any questions that you have. If you'd like to know more about alleles and genetics, remember we've already got a series of videos on genetics and please check those out. And of course, check out RDPOV because you notice how rad this video looked? All of their videos are awesome, just like this. They have amazing talent and they're just a lot of fun. A great group of guys and definitely support them over on Facebook. Aww. And I don't want to wreck your day, but this snake has legs. As always, like and subscribe. Make sure to click that little bell so you get a notification when our new videos come out, like maybe new videos about all the mechanisms of evolution. That's the kind of thing you want to see. If not, we got lots of rad reptile videos, all kinds of different animals that you might want to see, and we hope to see you real soon.